Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is such a gray, kind of chilly fall day out and I feel super cozy and wanted to do a good old fashioned Q&A. So I asked on Instagram for questions that you guys might have and I got a good number of questions. I'm gonna try to answer them all. Also, obviously I am not at home if you're like, Whoa, what is that stark background? I think most of you know I'm visiting my in-laws. And if you're wondering, my Instagram handle is Erica underscore Malton, and I always leave it in the description box in case you wanna follow me on Instagram. Okay, so the first question comes from Amaya Grace dot xo on instagram and her question is what other baby names were you considering love you love you too baby names we were considering so for boys i'm gonna keep some of the names still a little bit of a secret we do want to have more kids hugo is our first baby leonardo really like the name leonardo really like the name jude like the name nicholas nikolai i really like harry and girl names that we still really love. Valentina, I really love Isabel. We have Jolie, Kira, Violet, Sophie, Rose, Amelie, Philomena, Eloise are some of the girls. We have a, we have a lot of names if you saw this list, but those are some of the, some of our, uh, top choices. Next question comes from Pooja. I hope that's how you pronounce your name. Question is, are you following any schedule with Hugo? I am following a schedule-ish. It's not a very strict schedule, but our feedings are pretty consistent. So he'll usually wake up anytime between 5 and 6 a.m. He'll get a 6.30 a.m. bottle and then I'll normally put him down for his first nap around 7.45, 8 a.m. depending on how tired he is. What I normally do is two hours after his wake up time. So let's use today for instance, he woke up at 5.15. So I put him down for a nap at 7.15, which is actually a bit earlier than normal. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, he naps for two hours. He wakes up, I give him a little bit of pureed food. He gets a 10.30 a.m. bottle. The afternoon is kind of where our schedule derails a little bit. If we have a gym class or an appointment, I don't know, I just haven't found his afternoon schedule to be quite as consistent, but I try to get a nap in there for him around 12 or one. He gets a 2.30 bottle, another nap in around 3.30. He gets dinner at 5.30, again, which is like pureed vegetables, bath time around six, and then he is normally sleeping. Well, he gets his last bottle around 6.30, and then he's normally sleeping by seven. So that makes it sound like I have a pretty strict schedule, and I guess I do, but we're flexible. Also, we sort of fell into that schedule. It wasn't, no one gave that schedule to us. I just sort of read his signs and how he was feeling and that's kind of the schedule we're using now, but who's to say that if that will stay the same or change. Next question is from Brooke Olivia 91 and she said, best advice for someone thinking about starting a YouTube channel. Ah, I would say just start, just start, just start. If you're anything like me, I, could think of a million reasons why or to procrastinate just starting but the best thing to do is just to start especially if you think it's something you're really gonna love and that's sort of my biggest advice throughout your youtube career whether you're doing it for a hobby or you want it to be a little side hustle or if you're a stay-at-home mom like me and you want to make it into a part-time or full-time career a way for you to bring in money for your family my biggest advice is just keep going just keep doing it and do it because you love it you love it you love it for me it's definitely taken a lot more time a lot more effort to grow my audience but I love it. I love, love, love it. So whether two people are watching my videos or a hundred thousand, it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep doing it because I love it. Question comes from Rabina and she has actually, she gave me 10 questions. So I'm going to try to answer these as quickly as possible. Number one, who's your inspiration? Ah, that's a really great question. Ooh, I don't know. I guess I'm always really inspired by my husband. <laughs> that sounds super cringy, but he has such an amazing work ethic and has always had a really amazing work ethic and has always followed his heart and 
has always worked really hard to achieve his dreams and his goals and I've always really admired that about him. So I'm gonna say my husband. To describe Hugo in one word, I would say, I mean the first word that came to mind was feisty, but I think I would choose fun. Cause he can be, I think he's more like rambunctious. Rambunctious I think is a good word. Three, what languages do you speak? I only speak English. I actually, of all the subjects in school, language, foreign language was my worst. I am the worst with languages. I always said, I think my brain, the part of my brain that comprehends, learns, translates foreign languages never developed well because I'm so bad at learning foreign languages. She said, what would you like to be remembered when you're gone? Uh, as a good person, as someone who is trustworthy and honest. And she said, what are you going to dress up for Halloween this year? I don't know. I don't know. We're, I mean, it's, we're getting down to the, to the last sort of week and a half before, uh, I was about to say Christmas, before Halloween. We're, we're kind of scrambling a little bit because we think Hugo has outgrown his Halloween costume. <laughs> so I'm kind of doing the last minute scramble. I think once we get back home, I'll kind of focus on that a little bit more. She said, most embarrassing story. Ah, uh, my most embarrassing story. My auditions. I made a whole video about my like, worst auditions. When I think back to like really embarrassing times in my life, my failed auditions are definitely my most embarrassing. She said, what were you like as a kid? I think I would say in one word, I was a dreamer. I loved thinking of like the things I would be when I grew up and just dreaming about like the endless possibilities my life would take. She also said, what would you do with five million, five million dollars? Um, I would first try to find like a really good investment banker, would you call, or like investment person to help me with taking a sum of the money and investing it in places that would reap me some good interest <laughs> so that I could live off the interest of some of that money and not have to touch it. And it could sort of sit in a bank somewhere and be a nice nest or cushion for Hugo and maybe some of our future children. I would also probably give some of it to, you know, my parents, my husband's parents, and then I would probably donate a good sum of the money as well. He said, if you could be any animal in the world for one day, who, what would you be? Um, a cat for sure. And favorite Disney characters, her last question. Favorite Disney character, I mean, you guys know Mike Wazowski is my number one. Love Mike Wazowski. I also love Judy Hopps and I love Vanellope Von Schweetz. Okay, and the next question is from Mira on Instagram and she said, how did you do, how did you slash do you get through Hugo's growth spurts? My two and a half week old is going through one right now and I have no idea how to calm her. She's super restless and during the night I've tried everything. Help a mama out. Oh, my heart goes to you. It, <laughs> this isn't super comforting. I wanna say, it doesn't, here's the thing, it doesn't get easier, but it does get easier. You, you learn how to work through those growth spurts with your baby, but your baby's going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And so you're going to hit more of those times, those trying times where baby doesn't sleep or baby's super restless. And so my best advice is to know that it is such a transitory time. It's not permanent and you will get through it. You will get through it. You will get through it. How do I get through Hugo's growth spurts? That's exactly what I do. I just remind myself that it is not permanent and that yeah, it'll, it'll pass and help, 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 help. If you can, if you can have help, whether it be a parent or, you know, one of your parents or a friend or anybody who can come in and maybe help you for like an hour, one weekend, or I found like even just getting out of the house with Hugo and interacting with other adults that it doesn't necessarily fall under the category of help necessarily because they're not like helping you do the laundry or prepare a meal or something but just interacting with another adult so that I, you could get yourself out of that headspace of like oh my gosh this is so difficult i haven't slept the anxiety the frustration like all of those emotions if you can remove yourself from that i find that it super 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 helps yeah and i mean girl if you need to message me on instagram anytime to just vent please feel free 
And the very last question comes from Yara and it is, where are you from and how did you start your YouTube channel? So I'm from New York. That's where I was born and raised. And how did I start my YouTube channel? Um, back in 2014, I was living in my very first New York City apartment. Um, for those of you, I don't, I don't know if anyone is here now that was here back then. The other one, that was when I like first, first started my YouTube channel, first started filming videos. We were living in our very first Manhattan apartment. Jeff and I weren't even engaged yet. He was still working on the ships and was finishing up his very last contract. I had found this apartment for us and I moved in, I wanna say it was around October and I was living there for a few weeks before he was due to come back. He was due to come back in December and I randomly, super randomly, I guess was scrolling through YouTube or maybe I searched something and a YouTube video had popped up and I had no idea. I mean, that's a lot. I had a vague idea that making YouTube videos was like a new thing because at that point I think people had been making YouTube videos for at least five years. I think 2009 was when a lot of sort of the OG YouTubers started um, but I was working on the ships and like super it, it, it just wasn't a thing on my radar and so I actually stumbled upon Tanya Burr's YouTube channel. She is a beauty fashion lifestyle uh, British YouTuber and kind of stumbled upon a lot of her makeup tutorials and some of her favorite videos and I was like, fell down the rabbit hole a little bit and I was like this is so interesting this is so interesting and after watching a lot I kind of knew that makeup wasn't going to be my thing and I grew up as a performer I grew up as a dancer and an actress and I liked the idea of creating my own content and being in control of my own con content because if you're in the entertainment business you know as a dancer, as anyone who's gonna be on screen, you have no control over the lighting, over the shots, the cinematography. And so I really love the idea of having complete control over everything and making myself look a certain way and creating my own content. And so I knew that part of creating YouTube videos appealed to me, but I didn't quite know what I would make because I'm not, I was never good at makeup or that wasn't never a passion of mine, but I did know that I loved talking and connecting with people. And so if you look back to some of my very first videos, I think most of them are hauls. <laughs> Cause I was like, wait a minute, I love to talk and I love to go shopping. And at the time it was before Aaliyah, my best friend had her first baby. And so I remember doing like a lot of shopping for her. I think my first video was a baby haul for her daughter and it was like around you know around the autumn winter time and so I just I remember thinking like I'm just gonna start sharing what I love and honestly from about 2014 to I think 2015 2016 I didn't upload regularly like I just sort of uploaded for a few months and then stopped a few months and then stopped and then I started uploading regularly in 20. 16 the summer of 2016 when we moved down to florida that was when i was like you know what i really want to pursue youtube in a more consistent fashion and so that's what i ended up doing but yeah that's why i started my youtube channel i just really thought you know this sounds this looks fun this sounds like something i would be interested in doing and i love to gab and connect with people and you know do all that fun stuff so it's been perfect it's been perfect, perfect, perfect. Guys, those are all the questions. Thank you to everyone who DM'd me a question. If you want me to do another one of these Q&As, you can either leave a question down below or friend me on Instagram. That's a great way of keeping up with my everyday stuff. Guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. I hope you are all feeling the cozy winter fall vibes and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.